of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We gather celebrating these sacred mysteries. The mystery of God's incredible love for us. And the mystery of our sin sickness that walks away from God so often. Let us pause and ask forgiveness for the ways that we have not lived as children of God. The ways that we have done what is wrong. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and to come safely to the Paschal festivals through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated. A reading from the, the, from the book of Exodus. The Lord spoke to Moses, Go down now, because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have apostatized. They have been quick to leave the way I marked out for them. They have made themselves a calf of molten metal and have worshipped it and offered it sacrifice. Here is your God, Israel, they have cried who brought you up from the land of Egypt. I can see how headstrong these people are. Leave me now. My wrath shall blaze out against them and devour them. Of you, however, I will make a great nation. But Moses pleaded with the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your wrath blaze out against these people of yours whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? with arm outstretched and mighty hand? Why let the Egyptians say, ah, it was in treachery that he brought them out to do them to death in the mountains and wipe them off the face of the earth? Leave your burning wrath, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your servants, to whom by your own self you swore and made a promise. I will make your offspring as many as the stars of heaven, and all this land which I promised I will give to you, to your descendants, and it shall be their heritage forever. So the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. The word of the Lord. O oh Lord, remember me out of the love you have for your people. O oh Lord, remember me out of the love you have for your people. They fashioned the calf at Horeb and worshipped an image of metal, exchanging the God who was their glory for the image of a bull who eats grass. O oh Lord, remember me out of the love you have for your people. They forgot the God who was, in, who was their savior, who had done such great things in Egypt, such potence in the land of Ham, such marvels at the Red Sea. O oh Lord, remember me out of the love you have for your people. For this, he said, he would destroy them. But Moses, the man he had chosen, stood in the breach before them to turn back his anger from destruction. O oh Lord, remember me out of the love you have for you. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, Why to testify on my own behalf? My testimony would not be valid. But there is another witness who can speak on my behalf, and I know that his testimony is valid. You sent messengers of John, and he gave his testimony to the truth. Not that I depend on human testimony, no. It is for your salvation that I speak of this. John was a lamp, a, a light and shining. And for a time, you were content to enjoy the light that he gave. But his testimony is greater than John's. The works my father has given me to carry out, these same works of mine testify that the father has sent me. Besides, the Father who sent me bears witness to me himself. You have never heard his voice. You have never seen his shape. And his word finds no home in you because you do not believe in the one he has sent. You study the scriptures, believing that in them you have eternal life. Now, these same scriptures testify to me and yet you refuse to come to me for life. As for human approval, this means nothing to me. Besides, I know you too well. You have no love of God in you. I have come into the, in the name of my Father, and you refuse to accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe since you look to one another for approval? and are not concerned with the approval that comes from the one God. Do not imagine that I am going to accuse you before the Father. You place your hopes in Moses, and Moses will be your accuser. If you really believed him, you would believe me too, since I, it was I that he was writing about. But if you refuse to believe what he wrote, how can you believe what I say? The gospel of the Lord. Praise <clears throat> Well, yesterday we had a little reprieve, you know. We had that feast of the Annunciation, which broke the rhythm of Lent. And just in case we forgot where we are, we are in the desert, we are in this time of testing, we're in this time where we are being tested in so many different ways. And the, the testing and the desert, not only the Lenten testing and desert, the COVID testing and desert. And in this, what we're having is now a reading that is asking a much more difficult question. One of the tough ones. Moses had been up Mount Sinai. And up in Mount Sinai, he had the whole display of God. The, the, the glory of God was displayed. And, and God wrote the law on, his, on, on two tablets and handed them to Moses as, as his covenant with his people. And the covenant is the betrothal, the marriage between God and his people. And these ten are how the community will be directed. And before Moses can leave the mountain and return to the people, the people had already walked away from God. He didn't even get down the mountain. You know, it's a funny little piece of scripture, you know. When, when Moses saw Aaron, who was the priest, and he said, but Aaron, how could you do this? He said, well, it's not me, you know. They had some gold, they threw it into the fire, and a calf came out. Well, really. And isn't that what we do? Don't take responsibility. So let's ask now about the idols. And let's speak to the idols that, that exist now. And, and, and hear the, 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 the command from God, the first commandment, you must have no other God before me. Can we really say that God is God first and only? Can we really say that? Or have we put other things before our God? 
Do we use our time with thinking about God first? Or do we use our time where God kind of fits in if we have some time left over after? Do we use our money thinking about God first and, and ask, how would God want me to spend this money that I have? Or do we spend our money and fit God in somewhere after? When it comes to prestige and people recognizing us, all the likes on Facebook and WhatsApp and people tweeting and, and responding and all the social media, Instagram and Pinterest, when it comes to all of that, do we put God before or do we seek the approval of everyone else first? And, and do we push what we do to seek approval from other people rather than being the messengers of God first? Idolatry comes in many ways. In the Old Testament, it was a physical form with a golden calf which they worshipped. In our modern times, the idols aren't physical. Many people are, are worshipping pleasure. Do we often make choices for pleasure that we know are wrong and put our choice for pleasure before our choice for God? Where are we? Is God really the God of our life? Is God really first and foremost in everything in our life? The second piece of this, this scripture, which is so beautiful, is now Moses is on the back foot defending the people and saying to God, you know, Lord, for the sake of this people, for Abraham, for Isaac, for Moses, for, for all of these people, for all of your ancestors, for the sake of them, please be merciful to this people. How it going to look? You know, you brought them out of Egypt. You brought them through the desert to kill them. You know what everybody going to say? Moses is on the back foot now defending the people and interceding on their behalf. And Moses can intercede on their behalf because Moses is a friend of God. We are called now to intercede on behalf of our family. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. We're called to intercede on behalf of God for them Especially if we see that they're not living what we know God has asked us to live. Especially when we recognize that they have not put God first. Just as Moses interceded for his people, you are called to intercede for your people. I am called to intercede for my people. And you are my people. And that's why every day I'm offering mass for your intentions. That's why every day Every day, I'm praying that your journey with God will deepen and deepen and deepen as we go through this desert together. The, the reading is a heartbreaking reading because everything that God showed in love to the people, the people rejected that love. And yet God was mercy and God was kind. The, the text right after, after this one is, is, is one of the most beautiful texts. Because it speaks about a God of mercy, a God of kindness and tenderness who forgives to the next generation and whose love is always supreme. And, and, and really speaking about this incredible God of mercy and tenderness and kindness. Today as we hear the word of God, as we hear the word of God, I would ask you to spend some time today asking yourself, is God really first in my life? Have I made God God? Or have I put other things as God? And fitting God in wherever I can. And today, let us return to the Lord as we heard in that first song. Return to the Lord with all of our hearts that our whole being would put God first. And that God will be our God. Amen. Let us stand and bring our needs before this God of mercy and compassion. Father, we know your love.
and we experience your mercy. And we bring our whole world to you. And we pray, oh God, that in this moment, in this day, in these days of, of darkness and desert, where there's so much destruction and death and fear, that your incredible love will break through the death and the destruction and the fear and allow hope to arise in the hearts of your people as we turn our life back to you. Lord, hear us. We pray for, for Francis asking that you may be with him in a very special way. Bless him, O oh God, and allow him to have courage to lead us in these days. Lord, hear us. We pray, Father, that we in Trinidad and Tobago, that we may find a way to live in these days, that we may be respectful of each other by social distancing, by caring for our health, and by ensuring that everyone has what they need to live in these times. Lord, hear us. We pray for all of our leaders that you will give them courage in these days to make the difficult decisions that will be for the benefit of all of us. Lord, hear us. We bring our prayer. And the prayers that we have in our basket that you have sent into us, that we bring them before the Lord, asking the Lord that he hears every prayer and that he hears your intentions even now as you bring your intention before your God. Bring our prayer to the Father through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And we pray, O God, who by the grace of your Holy Spirit tempered the soul of Gordon Anthony Pantin with fortitude and humility and raised him to be priest and archbishop of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain so that he may be bearer of your life-giving word to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Grant us grace to be strong in faith, humbly confident in your aid, and tireless in doing good. Bestow upon us, we humbly pray, through the intercession of beloved servant of yours, Gordon Anthony Pantin, the special grace which we seek from your sovereign goodness, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. that your sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your Lord for the praise and glory of his name, for all good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, 
that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil. And always grant us your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, holy God, almighty and eternal Father, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so, help us imitate you in your kindness. And so with the we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of the Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who thou in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be brought together into one by your Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. As you come to this moment, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. I invite you to open your heart wide and invite Jesus into your heart. Is he really your God? Is he really your first? Is he really the one through whom everything else makes sense in your life? In this moment, as you prepare your heart to receive Him, let us also prepare our heart to reprioritize itself and to make Jesus first, all, everything in our life. Ask Jesus to enter in. And offer this moment for those in your family and your friends that you know are in need of mercy, that you know are in need of His care. And as we make this act of spiritual communion, we also make a sacrifice and an intercession on behalf of those that we love the most. And so we can say together, My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all. And I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to, your nev to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
spend this moment and treasure it. As Jesus comes to you in a new way in your heart, draw close to him and speak to him in your heart tenderly and let him speak tenderly to your heart. May this sacrament we have received purify us. We pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we are in this time where all the children are home, where we are in tight spaces. Remember, it's very, very important that we have a rhythm and a routine for our day. It's important for the children to have a rhythm and a routine for the day. It's important to stop and pray from time to time. It's important to stop and have a conversation about how they're feeling and how they're doing from time to time in the day. It's important that we check in with each other. But it's also important that we call to those that we most love and those who are elderly or self-isolating and ensure that they are okay. Because we can't be physically connected in space, it doesn't mean we can't be connected. And it doesn't mean that we have to distance each other in our heart. So let's use this time to build back relationships that we might have taken for granted over the long time. Amen? Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. let us go glorifying the Lord with our life.